Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, August 28, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the new call for a cashless society. Then, the shocking behavior behind raising McDonald's chickens. After that, the scramble is on to blame everyone except the murderer. And Hillary gives her views on press freedom. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Hillary laughing pin. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. Laugh with at Hillary. And I love how it's nonpartisan. It isn't even attacking her. Uh, it actually looks like a cross between her and uh, I guess kind of like a Rachel Maddow. And you press the button and then she laughs. That's her when she does that laugh. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. The Financial Times posted an anonymous article today calling for the abolition of cash, which of course gives central banks more power and governments more control. So it's entitled, The Case for Retiring Another Barbarous Relic. And the article laments the fact that people are stockpiling cash in anticipation of another economic collapse. This is a factor which they say is causing a lot of distortion to the economic system. Now you'll recall that this agenda to ban cash was one of the things that was being discussed at this year's Bilderberg meeting, which of course was attended by the Financial Times chief economics commentator, Martin Wolf. So this article by the Financial Times claims that we should give government and central banks more power, power by banning cash. The article entitled, The Case for Retiring Another Barbaric Relic, falsely claims that people who stockpile cash are distorting economic markets by doing so, which obviously is patently false. And the article states, tax, for example, could be automatically levied and reimbursed in real time on transactions between liable bank accounts, you know, under this electronic, electronic only monetary system. And the author of the article, who was anonymous for whatever reason, he said that another reason cash should be banned is because it cannot be traced or tracked by the government. But that's exactly why we should never ban cash in the first place. You know, back a couple of weeks ago, I was down in Lake Jackson, Texas, covering an event. And because I was a good 200, 300 miles away from home, my bank flagged my credit card as possibly stolen. So when I went to try to get a hotel room for the night, I couldn't use it. And similarly, in like 2011, I was down in Houston. And this time I was actually closer to home at the time. You know, I was about 100 miles away. And the bank also flagged my credit card as being potentially stolen. So I couldn't use it at all. And also near where I live now is a Coke machine that has, you can use as credit cards. You know, you can swipe it or run it through. But most of the time when I try to use a credit card for the machine, it either times out completely just or just takes way too slow or doesn't work at all. So do you really want the government to tell you when and where you can spend your money at? And also, let's talk about money confiscation, otherwise known as a bail-in, which the article actually points out when it says that tax could be automatically levied in real time from your bank account. Back in 2013, when Cyprus was going through an economic collapse, the International Monetary Fund and the European Central Bank started pulling money out of people's banks' accounts and their savings accounts, and that's what we call a bail-in. So when we don't have cash, basically the government has complete control over your life because they have complete control over your money and the supply of money. 
So, you know, even if you don't, if you use credit cards for almost every transaction now, you should still be against the complete ban of cash because this is going to make sure that you can't do anything about how the government runs your life. Also, subscribe to their new YouTube channel, Resistance News. And once again, this is Kit Daniels with InfoWars.com. And just to see this cashless society playing out in the real world, a glitch at HSBC means that 275,000 people might not be getting their payday checks. Now, a source said that the glitch wasn't due to hacking, but an IT issue, and it delayed transactions on the final business day of the month, conveniently, when many British salaries are paid. HSBC says they're working on the problem, and the majority of payments are going to be completed throughout the day and early evening. Any remaining payments will be completed overnight. Now, Monday, August 31st, is a public holiday in Britain. So, of course, this glitch had a lot of people really worried that they weren't going to be able to get any paychecks before this long weekend. Um, you know, but that's kind of convenient here because HSBC goes on to say anyone that still hasn't received their payments after Saturday needs to talk to the bank. Well, the bank's going to be closed on Monday. So there you have it. I mean, that's what it's going to look like if there is a glitch in the system where they can conveniently meet out people's payments. Um, you know, and this is not the first time. Uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland group suffered a payments glitch in June. It affected 600,000 credit and direct debit transactions. And this was just several months after that same bank was fined $88 million for a computer failure that left millions of customers uh, without access to their accounts for weeks. So, I mean, <laughs> that's this is what the cashless society is going to do makes you feel completely safe about where your money is. And no doubt, as more of these glitches arrive, we're going to see a rise in alternative currencies. And no doubt, as more of these glitches arise, alternative currencies are going to become even more prevalent. Let's just hope that they, the government doesn't try to get their hands in that. Now, let's take a look at Obama's you know, most transparent administration ever. We've all seen how that's been playing out. But let's take a look at what press freedom is going to look like under a Hillary Clinton presidency. Well, let, let me answer one of your questions, because I think that's what you are entitled to. So this is the same woman that roped off reporters and corralled them so they couldn't get too close to her. Now, she you can see the disdain she has for the fourth estate who are meant to check those in power. And of course, she does not appreciate being checked. So that's how she's treating people. Now, Hillary Clinton, you know, she's Planned Parenthood's champion. So she's also come out now calling the GOP terrorists for wanting to defund Planned Parenthood. Uh, but I really liked what Governor Bobby Jindal had to say about that. He slammed Clinton for her hypocrisy, saying that her foundation has raised money from countries that terrorize women. Said she must be confused to think that 50 percent of Americans who oppose abortion are terrorists because Hillary Clinton uh, she should take a look in the mirror. Her foundation has raised money from countries that prevent women from driving, legalize spousal rape, and allow for genital mutilation. And of course, while Clinton was the Secretary of State, the Clinton Foundation received funds from a group on the State Department's list of banned terrorist organizations and one of the world's leading financial sponsors of Hamas. So I'm really starting to like the way that uh, Governor Jindal is responding to all of these people out there who want to implement their totalitarianism. You recall um, just last week, there was uh, protesters out there protesting him wanting to defund Planned Parenthood. And so he said, you know what? Well, then I'm going to go ahead and project those undercover Planned Parenthood videos on the side of the governor's mansion. So if you want to be out here protesting, you can at least see what you are supporting. And that's that same sort of attitude of just standing up in the face of totalitarianism that we would like to see Rand Paul do. We want to see Rand Paul stop being so gentlemanly and just start being non-PC. You can see the country is hungry for that. That's why they're responding to Donald Trump. Now, Washington Post has come out today saying, oh, look at Rand Paul's sneak attack strategy. It's not good enough for you to stand back politely like a gentleman, which is exactly what Alex Jones had to say today on the show. But look at it. I've been telling Rand Paul for a year to act aggressive. And now Trump has shown you that I'm right. It's sitting right there in front of you. And don't be above adopting strategies. And I know full well Rand Paul is a guy's guy and drinks beer and whatever. But he's got the doctor's affect 
of acting real gentlemanly and calming his patients. The patients don't need to be calmed, doctor. Let your hair down. Show people who you really are. Get in there and kick Trump's ass if you want to win this thing. That's all I'm saying. I'm done ranting about Rand Paul. That's my message to him. But the, the coup de grace, the cherry on top, what pushed me over the edge to say all that, was coming in here and reading the Washington Post praising you of what a smarty pants you are. The, the Washington Post is your friend, right? They were attacking you when you were the leader. Now they're going, that's right. You tie the bowling balls to your legs and you jump in the North Atlantic. That's how you swim. Never mind this life jacket. Yes, we put the bowling balls on. Now Now padlock them, throw the key away. Yeah, just that plank right over there. Just go over that. Just get on it. And then jump off right in there. And then that's how you're going to win. Oh, you need help carrying the bowling balls? Here, let us help you. Oh, we're your friends, see? <laughs> it's kind of like in Goodfellas where he's telling her he wants to kill her. And he goes, just go in there. That's some free fur coats. Yeah, yeah, just... Right, right, in the door, right there. It's uh... <laughs> oh, have, oh, I'm sorry. They had like the sword all sharpened and aimed at his heart. Sir, if you just fall forward, right on this, it'll fix all your problems, and you'll be president of the United States. Uh, all those people up there in D.C. are there to try to keep their job and get hired by the next politician. But let's talk about this society that is obsessed with political correctness. What is that going to look like in the future? Was Bryce Williams, a.k.a. Vester Flanagan, a product of the PC society? The gunman was offended by everything. Now, you might have heard that he was motivated by racist uh, comments made by Parker. Now, somehow the, these, ter these terms that she used, like swinging by an address or going out into the field while she was an intern, um, insulted him and angered him because he thought that Parker's use of the term out into the field was a reference to black slavery. He would say stuff like, well, out in the field, what do you mean? Like picking cotton? That's racist. When going out in the field, reporters go out in the field when they do their, it's just part of a, the jargon if you're in the industry. Um, also, a manager brought in a watermelon to share with employees and Williams took that as a racist insult. He's like, nope, this is out for me. You guys are calling me out because I'm black. Now, I'm sorry, David Knight's son, Travis, brought in a watermelon to the office and did not share it with any of us, and I thought that was very racist. I was offended by that. But, I mean, that's just the problem here. When you have this kind of victim mentality, when, when you're a racist yourself and everything you see is racist, then you're going to, to act like this. And now this PC culture is actually creating lunatics who are going out and killing people. Warning. This report is by a belligerent journalist. The updated Law of War manual has now awarded the military the capability to hold a journalist deemed an unprivileged belligerent without charges and indefinitely. New Defense Department guidelines allow commanders to punish journalists and treat them as unprivileged belligerents if they believe journalists are sympathizing or cooperating with the enemy. The Geneva Convention does not afford such unprivileged belligerents the same basic human rights given to the average citizen. The manual adds, Reporting on military operations can be very similar to collecting intelligence or even spying. A journalist who acts as a spy may be subject to security measures and punished if captured. It is not specific as to the punishment or under what circumstances a commander can decide to punish a journalist. Another provision says that relaying of information could be construed as taking a direct part in hostilities. Officials said that is intended to refer to passing information about ongoing operations, locations of troops, or other classified data to an enemy. This could easily be applied to any journalist covering the highly publicized Jade Helm operations. I'm here at Camp Swift right outside of Bastrop, Texas, where an exercise that has never been done will take place. Frank Smith, senior advisor for journalist security at the Committee to Protect Journalists, said, At a time when international leadership on human rights and press freedom is most needed,